All right. Pleasure to welcome to the podcast, Maddie Weaver, recent uh, D2 commit that we'll talk all about. But Maddie, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, well, thank you for uh, coming on and thank you for being patient. I know you reached out a couple times to uh, uh, to get on the show and here we are. Here we are. It's going to be awesome. I always like to start uh, by hearing the story of when you first jumped into gold. Do you remember that? Gosh, yeah. So I started playing lacrosse in third grade and it was definitely a jump off the deep end. I played soccer goalie for the rec for a while and didn't really have the hand-eye coordination for the little stick. So they mm. put me in goal and here we are now, 10 years later. So where did you grow up and what age, what age was that? Um, Gosh, I guess I was eight if it's been 10 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been a long time. Yeah, it has been a long time. Where And where whereabouts did you grow up? I live in Forest, Virginia. I've always lived here. So I started our playing with our rec league, Forest Youth Athletics Association, and now yeah. I help coach and ref for them. So it's Sweet. been a, what what's the lacrosse scene like in Forest, Virginia? Not a lot. We have a youth league that has some really great girls. I love the girls who play for them, but it's definitely we've lost some numbers in the past few years. So try to get out there and get more people as many mm -hmm. as we can. There's definitely a, more boys who play than girls. Our travel team that I play for is about an hour and a half away. There's no travel teams in my area, but oh, yeah. definitely trying to grow the game. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, so did you play in the field uh, too, when you were eight and kind of field and goalie or, or just pure goalie? Yeah. I play defense also definitely yeah. not as much anymore going yeah actually committing as a goalie, but I try to get out on the field when I can. If there's two goalies and we split halves, I'll play defense for a half. Yeah. Just whatever the team needs. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. So you were, um, you were a goalie in soccer and they said, all right, well, if you're a goalie in soccer, you can be a goalie in lacrosse. And then, and then they threw you in there for a half. Yep. Here we are now. And here we are 10 years later. So I guess you were pretty good at it. I mean, if you, if you're still, if you stuck with it, right. I mean, what was that kind of first experience like for you? Oh, gosh. It was definitely scary at first. I was very, very afraid. I can admit to that now. I was definitely like <laughs> the Transformers goalie with all the gear, elbows, shoulders. Yeah. You know how it is. Looked like a little robot out there. It's gotten <laughs> better. You know, it's rough jumping off the deep end into a goalie gear, especially with my team. Had a lot of girls who have been playing for a really long time also. Mm. So... It was a jump, but we did it. My parents let me take a shot at trying out for travel. Uh, they always joke with me. They thought it was they got to be the bad guy, the coaches, instead of my parents. They weren't thinking I was going to make it, and here we are now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did you then go about learning um, how to make saves? Did you have a goalie coach, or did you do some camps, or talk to me about that? So my dad was my soccer coach. He's probably my biggest supporter. And he was always out there with the tennis balls, you know, mm. throwing them at the helmet, getting rid mm -hmm. of the flinch. Mm -hmm. I had some great dad coaches in my life, just friends and family who coached rec league or whatever, who were always there for me. I haven't had any private training until this year. I started working with a I'm trying to think coach Maddie. I can't think of her last name right now, but she played at UConn and she's been a huge help with me, like completely changing my game. I love her. She's great. Awesome. Um, yeah, I don't know who you're talking about either, although we'll have to we'll have to look it up. We'll to find her last name and text you. I'm trying to think. I yeah. she coaches at a local boarding school. I can't okay. think of her last name right now, but she's amazing. Okay. Her name's also Maddie. Her name is also Maddie. Yes. Right. And she was goalie at UConn. Got it. She's great. Got it. And so like, you know, what were some of those initial um, challenges or initial uh, problems that you ran into being the goalie? Um, It was definitely hard teammate wise. Not that I don't love my team, but I feel like when you're little and you're learning how to be a goalie, a goalie is a tough position. You have a lot of people relying on you to make saves, critical saves. I mean, there's been games where we're double overtime and it comes down to is can I save it or is it going to go in? And it's been, we've had some hard patches with teammates and problems like that. I would say that's the hardest. And that's one of the reasons I became a mortgage message ambassador. So 
what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. It's helped me in the long run, but I feel like every goalie can relate to the, that kind of pressure. Yeah. Let's talk about that. So, you know, especially, um, you know, young youngsters, uh, who don't have the emotional control or the maturity can oftentimes, you know, just have an emotional outburst at the goalie. So like, you know, that you, you let one in and your teammate turns around and goes, Maddie, you should have had that. What do you, what do you do? What do you recommend goalies do when they get that sort of situation, when they're in that kind of situation? Definitely been there. And I think what you have to do in the moment, it's hard. Cause you right. also want to be like, well, come on, there's four defenders also. Like you're telling me like this person got through them to get to me. It's not all me, but I think you have to take a step back and just take a deep breath and realize that your whole team is also here trying to win too. And there's factors in their head that are like, oh, I should have won the draw. I should have gotten this pass. I should have done that. So they're just letting the frustrations out on you because there's one of you mm -hmm. where there's three midfielders, four defenders. So it's easier to single you out because they've also never played goalie. Right. So most of them. So they don't know the, like how hard it can be sometimes. And I think some of the best – I'm trying to think like, sorry, some of the best uplifters or things that have helped me in those moments of like clashing with other teammates is my defenders. I have an amazing, amazing support group of defenders in my life, both at travel and at high school. And mm -hmm. if I didn't have them to also be like, oh, sorry, my phone's going off <laughs> to also be like, hey, Maddie, like, it's OK. We know like we understand and we're here for you and to defend me also, it would be a different situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our groups are amazing. Yeah. So, so, you know, the, I guess lesson being find that, uh, find the girls who are positive and who lift you up and kind of, you know, lean into that. And there is, you know, I, to your point, like everyone wants to win and some girls are very competitive and, and, you know, sometimes it's just an emotional outburst and it's like, they, they it's someone to blame because there's one goalie like you said and so sometimes you do have to pull them aside after the game um or you know during practice and just let them know that you know that kind of comment is not is not helping us win it's not constructive it makes me feel horrible and then i play even worse um, yeah. and i'm sure every time that you you know get beat you don't want me to yell in your face which which i don't right so yeah sometimes you got to pull them aside and have that conversation have you ever done that I have definitely been in those situations, yes. And I think we could tie this back to, sorry to talk about it again, but the Morgan's Message program is just such a great program. My high school's had problems previously with team team situations and whatnot. And bringing Morgan's Message into the group, as well as the new coaching staff and whatnot, has really brought us together because we can all sit together and be like, okay here's what happened. The game went bad. We lost, but we're all still here. We're all together. We can talk, we can cool down. And I think having a third party like Morgan's message that provides resources to help and cope with all that and examples has been really helpful to both of my teams. Talk to me about Morgan's message. So I've, I've, I've heard of it, but perhaps, um, somebody listening to this has not. So let's just start from the beginning. Like, oh, what is it? Morgan's yeah. Message. Especially as a goalie, I feel like you can really get in your head on the field, off the field. There's a lot of pressure, save rates, percentages, goals, all these things. And I was in a tough place with that, especially in the mm. recruiting cycle. I mean, you've got 20 goalies at one camp who all want the same spot on a roster. And I was just in a rough place trying to figure out where I belonged. And Morgan's Message is a program dedicated to Morgan Rogers, uh, number nine. She was a lacrosse player who unfortunately ended her life too early due to teammate struggles and mental health problems. And it just really focuses on human over athlete and how everybody on this field is still a person. And you have to acknowledge that. At the end of the day, it's a game. And we're all still human. We all still go home after this and we all need to work together. Mm -hmm. It's a great program. I love it. Cool. Where is, uh, where can I, or where can we find out more about that? They have an Instagram. They also have a podcast. I've been on their website and talked about that. You can look at my Instagram profile and click on the link. I've done my own podcast about mental health as a goalie. And I think it's 
should read it. I think I did pretty good. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what kind of lessons are in there? What, what, um, if some goalie is struggling with mental health, I know you've already dropped a few of the, the lessons along the way, but what, you know, what could we say to them? I think again, I'll come back to it. Find your people on a team. I mean, there could be, you could be on a team with 12 girls. You could be on a team with 50 girls. I've had experiences with both and there's going to be somebody there who can be positive like you and lift you up. My defender best friend, Corinne, couldn't do it without her. She's always there after games to like sit down with me and we can break it down and we can acknowledge that we both made mistakes. But again, at the end of the day, we're both people. Mm -hmm. And I think a support group is just the best thing you can have for yourself as a goalie in like a single position and as a player. Mm. Support group. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. What about the goalies that um, sometimes coaches can be unintentionally hard on the goalie. Like they've never been a goalie. Right. And so they don't know what a goalie goes through and they think they're doing their best, but they're really causing a lot of problems. They're not giving them an adequate warm up. They're doing drills where their goalie's just getting fired on. They're saying you need to, you need to make those saves right. When, when they're kind of blaming them as well. How, um, what would you say to those goalies? I would say to those goalies to just, Oh, sorry. This hits close to home. Not my current coach. Love my current coach. If she's watching <laughs> us right yeah. now, yeah. not about my current coach, but you just have to, again, acknowledge he's your coach is a human and you are human. And you think it's good to have a conversation and be like, I know you've never played goalie before. Maybe they were an attacker and they're used to just throwing balls at goalies. That's their point of view. And it's best to just have a conversation about this is what I need. One of my, prospect camps I went to the coach that I actually committed to told me that you should know exactly how many shots you need in a warm-up you should know your areas you need for your warm-up you should know what you like materials because you have to be your own advocate and speak for yourself as a specialized position I feel like Fogo can relate to this also because mm -hmm. they require a different warm-up you mm -hmm. have to be your own advocate stand up for yourself let them know what you need and if you have to get a parent involved also to speak up for you. You can do that. You just have yeah. to be your own advocate. Yeah. hundred percent agree. And many times, um, you know, especially on young club teams, you might be the only goalie out there. Right. And so also understanding that, you know, if you're just not feeling it in a drill and you're getting shelled and you just took one off the thigh and then you took another one off the thigh, like you, you can step out. Right? Yeah. like i think that's kind of like i think a lot of goalies don't realize that that's even an option because like i'm the only goalie they need me in there and i don't have you ever had any uh experience with that yes i have i was i've been the only goalie for a few of my teams that i've played for and i think that is also another i hate to bring it back to mental health but it can tie back to that because you can feel like a pressure that it's just you. Like you have to be yeah. there for your team. You have to get these refs so that you can get your save rate up. Right. And again, you have to be your own advocate. You can't put the team over yourself. Human over athlete. It's the yep. most important. Yeah. I know how that is. I pushed myself last weekend and played with a broken hand. Wasn't my smartest move. Definitely had a lower save rate, but looking back at it now i should have been my own advocate and human over athleted but be, you know be your own advocate human <laughs> over athlete um yeah when you are uh we're talking about that thumb injury by the way but, uh, a little later but um when you are the only goalie at first i was like yeah that's cool like you're guaranteed the starting spot but it you know it can definitely take its toll mentally and it kind of goes both ways too some goalies struggle with uh, you know, being a backup or being a starter and having that backup kind of nipping at their heels because they're always thinking, oh, well, I might get pulled. So, you know, a lot of different mental health challenges are out there. Doesn't matter the situation. Um, but yeah, I, th I think finding that support group um, and being, you know, human over athlete, that's the theme, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Talk to me about that thumb injury. Every Every goalie goes through it. Um, I remember I hurt my thumb so bad. I don't, I don't know if, it, I don't think it was broken. It was just really badly sprained in college at a Thanksgiving camp of all things, like playing with a youngster. Uh, I'm in college. Right. And we're like, um, we're playing with like 12 year olds and like one of this 12 year old, like catches it right on the crease. And like, he's just going to shoot. He crease cranked me, shot as hard as he could. And I just went to make the save and it hit me right in the thumb. And it was one of the worst pains I've ever had. 
Uh, but talk to me about your injury. So I broke this hand last year, my thumb right in here, because I was using inadequate gloves mm. that a coach had given me. And were they that, just normal field player gloves? They were yeah. boys gloves, but I, I want to think that he didn't know that yeah. and he thought they were goalie gloves, but uh. I broke my thumb two weeks before our first game, my first varsity season, only goalie at the time. So it was definitely, I, I went through it slightly to say that I was a big it was hard for me because I worked very hard to be on varsity and there we were but I ended up getting hard cast I love my orthopedic doctor he was great and I played in a hard cast for eight weeks wow yeah, we how did you a, do that we cut a field player glove in half and wrapped it around the cast uh -huh. and then tied it up so yeah I played in a cast for a while and Definitely. then did you have your thumb like behind the, the plastic or did you just play like? We like cut the glove and stretched it over the cast. I, I wish I had pictures. I probably deleted them by now, but yeah, yeah. Shove the glove over the cast. And it was one of those that goes like down your wrist and stuff. So I definitely looked goofy, but. But what I mean is like, then do you, do you set up with in, in your top hand, do you set up with your thumb just kind of like this? Like, oh. Yeah. Did you like so, put, did you like put your thumb like behind, like behind the plastic here to like for protection or you just played normal? I just played normal and I somehow didn't get hit all those, all those games, which it was a bright red cast. So I don't understand how it also wasn't a target, <laughs> but I just somehow thank God didn't get hit and it healed good. And yeah. this was from my lovely well, friend Mia. Yeah. Hold on. So the, that is, is that your right you're holding up? This is my right hand. Yeah. That's your right hand. You're a righty? Yep. Okay. So you broke your left, your left thumb. So like a shot came and hit your thumb yep. on the bottom hand. Yep. Oh, wow. Last year. Oh, on the crease roll. So yeah. 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 Also. Oh, and wow. When my friend Mia was shooting on me and we were just goofing around and wasn't paying attention and broke this one, but I got out of my cast two weeks ago and I've been in the splint still playing, which is yeah. nice. So when you come back from a thumb injury, are you um, like mentally, are you a little bit out of it? Oh yeah. So I played at Capital Cup this last weekend with the PCK Pandas and I hadn't been able to practice at all. I got my cast off two days before the tournament. Mm-hmm. And it was a jump off the deep end, definitely. I'm mm -hmm. very grateful for the coaches for being there for me and helping me through the warm up and whatnot. But I definitely was more nervous. I was guarding on my right hand, definitely like more timid to where I normally play out. Yeah. And I definitely should have practiced more looking back at it. I would not recommend going right back out there. I think. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes goalies email me and say, like, hey, I just broke my thumb. Like, should I play? And I'm always just like, no. Like, <laughs> no. Play like, don't play, play with the broken stuff. Practice first. Get at least three hours of practice in. Is yeah. my don't be like Maddie Weaver. Yeah, there you go. In that, in that context, in that context. Yeah. Be like Maddie Weaver in, in the human. In goal. In when you have two rally. thumbs. Yeah. Maddie Weaver when you have two thumbs. Yeah, don't that's be like Maddie Weaver's thumbs. That's I think that's the that's oh, the, what we're talking about here. She's quite crooked. You don't yeah. want to be like <laughs> got some curve. Um, so you committed to play division two lacrosse. I would love to hear about um sort of your recruiting journey. Was it always, you know, was that kind of always a program you're looking at? Did you think about going D one or D three or talk to me about that? So to start off about where I'm going, I love Emory and Henry University. My dad played football there, so Ooh. he's an alum, and my mom is going back there to get another degree, I think. So that'll just tell you how much my family loves the school. I think it has an amazing campus. I love the team that's there now. I've made a lot of really great friendships already. Yeah, I did have a roommate. She's transferring out, though, I think, but I still love her, and I just love the program. Unfortunately, our coach is leaving. But mm -hmm. I am super excited to see who's going to be coming in. And I love the school. I think it's great. My recruiting process was definitely stressful. I always wanted to play D2 because not that I didn't think I could play D1. I definitely I had opportunities to do so. But I feel like the stress 
and whatnot wasn't for me. I'm very easily distracted and I also want to be a doctor. So I had a pretty good feeling that was not a smart combo for my future. Mm-hmm. But D2 is always sweet spot for me. Talk to a lot of coaches. It's hard as a goalie because I feel like you have a lot of people telling you if you're not committed by your junior year summer, it's not happening is what everybody told me. They were like, mm-hmm. if you're not committed now, it's not happening. Mm-hmm. If you're not committed next week, it's not happening because of the limited spots and positions. And of course, then everybody was like, the 2025 class has the most goalies we've ever seen. And I was like, great. Yay. Definitely not freaked out, but I had a lot of great supporters. Um, The owner of Next Step Tournaments, Coach Eliza. I love her. She was always there for me and my family called to check on me. Mm. And She was the last person, well, obviously my parents, but last person I talked to before I committed. And she called me and was like, it's going to come. You just have to find the place that wants you. Don't chase them. When you find where's your home, they'll chase you and you'll know that's what it is. And I went on my overnight at Emory the next weekend and here we are now. Nice. The wasps, right? Yes. Stingers up. Stingers up. Go, go wasps. Yeah. I love, love it. it. Um, so um, what was it about? I mean, I guess you had some ties to that university. I mean, if your dad played football there, your mom's going there or, or going to be going back to get something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, and so, I mean, that might've been a school that you were looking at and then how did, how specifically did you get on their radar? So it was always a joke about Emory because my dad was like, you're going to Emory. And I was like, I don't know. You know how it is. You have to look around. And they didn't have a lacrosse program until I guess now two years ago. This is their second year. Oh, having a new program. program. Okay. Yeah. So I was always like, I'm not going, they don't have a team or whatever. And then I, they of course got a team and I was like, well, it's D3. We have to wait it out. And then they became D2. And I was like, okay, maybe this is a sign. They're D2. They have a lacrosse team. I love the school. And then they had my major and a PA program, which is what I want to do. And it was just, it was meant to be. I met the coach. I love Coach Flynn. Best of luck to him in Florida. I'm super excited to meet the new coach too. And the girls have just been amazing to me, like reaching out overnight. It's been great. That's amazing. So have you uh, had conversations with the current team? Yes, I have. A girl from my high school went to Emory and Henry to play lacrosse, one of my good friends. And I've connected with a lot of the 2024s that are going. I think it's a great team. The girls there are amazing. Yeah. Um, Very cool. Well, congrats on that. That's going to be awesome. Um, It looks like, so it's a new program. And it looks like last year you guys went one and 16. So we got some work to do, right? We got some work to do. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There's some work to do. I was at that one win. So, you know, maybe I'm some good luck. Just kidding. Don't kill me. Stingers up. But, <laughs> no, but hey, well, you're going to be at all the, all the lacrosse games in the future. So that, that that'll turn it around. I think there's definitely some, some work that is going to be done in any new program. Sure. Um, they had a lot of girls there who weren't natural lacrosse players, hadn't been playing for their whole lives. Like many programs will have yeah. because so new they had a lot of amazing girls who came for like equestrian or soccer who just joined the lacrosse team to help out I mean one of them Riley Fireball I can't pronounce her last name but she plays soccer and I saw her at one game I mean she's doing up and down that field speedy as you can yeah believe and I mean without those girls it wouldn't have been a team so I've they might have had a, a bad season a rough season but I had a lot of people come to help out that didn't have to step up. And I think that speaks volumes about the program. Totally. I mean, and it's so young, there's no seniors, right? Or are there even juniors? I mean, like it's, you know, so no, you know, experience, you know, so as the team gets more experience, you'll get a lot better. That's for sure. Yeah. All right. And coming up from D3 to D2 also is new competition and whatnot. That was their first D2 thing. Good point. Um, do they stream those games? Can I watch them on TV somewhere? They do. Flow Live. Flow Live. A subscription, but I know. I'm watching every game. I get Flow my- Live. I get I get all the I get all the lacrosse streams. Yeah, I love them. 
We got my dad puts on his old football jersey. We'll be out there next year if he can find it. There we'll you go. Get out right. there. Stingers up. Stingers up. Stingers up. All right. Good luck. Um, <laughs> when you think about uh, some of the current college, or do you watch a lot of college lacrosse or pro lacrosse? When you think about some of the goalies uh, doing it right now, who who do you like to watch, and what do you like about their game? I really like Shea Dulce. I probably can't pronounce her name. I'm really bad with pronunciation, but I really like what she's doing. I think she's a really fun goalie to watch mm -hmm. and stuff. I would love to play more like her. I really need to work on coming out my crease more, being more out there, but I think she's killing it. I have only ever seen professional lacrosse on TV. We were supposed to go to a game this weekend, but my travel schedule got flipped around, so we couldn't make it to USA lacrosse mm -hmm in time to make the game but mm. it's definitely something i would like to see more of some more live lacrosse yeah shay um i love shay she's an awesome goalie and plays a lot like you know the guy the guy goalies like with that wide base do you have you ever tried that wide base i do have a wide base you do I have trouble for it before yeah i'm more of a i like to fill up my goal think about yeah. it i feel big then i think i'm big nothing can go around me right yeah yeah are you are you pretty tall? I'm around like five. I want to say five seven. Some people would say I'm probably shorter than that. I don't know. I think I'm five seven. Okay, that's pretty tall for a girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, license says I'm five seven, so I must be five seven. <laughs> I think the program said that my my Cal program said I was five ten, but I'm definitely five eight. So <laughs> you, yeah. know, you always got to put a couple more inches and a couple more pounds on the program. Oh, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? So ha, you, you mentioned that you play the wide base and sometimes coaches have told you not to do it. And I'm curious how you react to that. Cause I know a lot of young girls might, and young guys for that matter too, might be in that, that situation where like you learn something from a camp, like a wide base, or you hear somebody talk about it on a podcast and you're like, Hey, I'm going to do it. And then the coach goes, no, uh, how do you how do you overcome that? So I've definitely gotten conflicting advice before. I feel yeah. like as a goalie, especially, it's hard because you don't know who to listen to, you know, and, and lacrosse in general. It's a sport that not many people know a lot about. So there's a lot of unsolicited advice from soccer friends and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you should do whatever feels best for you. Personally, me, I always listen to Coach Maddie. I think she's a great coach, and she's helped me out a lot. And she did help me tighten up my wide base. But I think you should do whatever feels best for you. Again, be your own advocate. If you want to do the split single and it helps your save rates, do some splits. You do you, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so Maddie Hooper, is that is that does that ring a bell? That sounds familiar. It might sound be. familiar. All right. It may be. I'll have what? to let me text her real quick. She's probably eating dinner right now. But I'll text. <laughs> her. Tell her to come on the podcast. Dr drop in, drop in for a surprise podcast visit. Um, while you're doing that, I will tee up another question for you. Um, what would you say you're working on in your goalie game right now, Maddie? I sorry. I was texting her. Okay. I would say at the current moment, what I'm working on is getting back in my groove. I've been out for a while and I just really need to find my, my sway of things a lot and get back in my clearing, especially with this being my dominant hand. I feel like when it was my left hand, it was easier because right. I could still ball ball. Oh my gosh. I muted my phone. It is Hooper. It is Maddie Hooper. She just okay. texted Confirmed. Me. All right. Yes. Oh my gosh. She said, don't brag on me too hard. Okay. Too late. Too late. The, the braggadocio has already come in. Love her. Oh, she's great. But what I'm working on right now would definitely be getting back in my groove, especially with clearing, getting over this. Yeah. Hopefully it goes off in two weeks and I'll be able to play again. I'm still no, no playing, but we'll be back in it soon. What did you do when you got a broken thumb? Well, when it was my left hand, I didn't really stop because the doctor who I had at that time told me I could still play as long as I was in the hard cast and I could yeah. still continue lifting and whatnot as usual. So that was 
breaking my left thumb was definitely a lot easier than my right hand because I could just everything was normal. I just had a giant red cast right. versus the hand the break went through my joint. So I've been unable to play Ow. the entire duration of this. And I haven't really been able to get out there or touch my stick at all, except for the last tournament. So it's been hard. Yeah. What's your plan to get back into the swing of things? I'm st planning on starting my lifting again tomorrow. Hopefully maybe not as much upper body until this hand is back. And as soon as this cast comes off, I'm out there. Got mm -hmm. some practices lined up ready. Love it. Are you, uh, when you get out there to, to take work, is it like just taking a lot of shots or are there particular drills that you like to do? So actually coach Maddie started me on this, but I've been doing a lot of ladder work lately, yeah. trying yeah. to get back on that, get my footwork game up speed, really punching at the ball. That's been something I've been needing to work on is ladder work. I really would rather do like in-game ish shots than drills. I'm more yeah. of a like game goalie than a practice goalie. So I like to get my dad out there with a stick and just tell him to go crazy mm -hmm. and crease rolls, stuff like that. Yeah. More love it. Real life settings than like no stick, catch with this hand, catch with that hand. Right, right. Um, when you think about the mental game, you know, all, all goalies need to be mentally strong, right? Need to have that mental toughness. Um, are there some lessons that come to mind that have really helped you through that? Um, just especially as a younger goalie and varsity the past few years or whatever, it's just been hard as a goalie, there's one of you. It's very easy to point fingers at goalies when things start going downhill and whatnot. And again, being your own advocate, you have to just recognize yourself and ex know your worth and know it's okay. Like, I know I'm good. I'm committed. I'm fine with that. And just being able to stand up for yourself is what I would like to tell all young goalies. Don't worry about if Emily or Anna or whatever says this or that I mm -hmm. wasn't trying to quote Emily for my team that's why I changed the name Emily is not mean to me if you're watching this Emily but <laughs> if Bob says oh you should have saved that like what are you doing you just have to be like no I didn't like I recognize that I'm good and I practice and I put just as much work into this as anybody else and that's okay brush yeah. it off yeah gold Emily yeah, what what about though if you're having a bad game, like you've let in four or five in a row, um, which happens to all of us, right? Uh, is there something specific that you do, or is you know is is it that cliche goldfish memory? I'm gonna forget that uh, and and try and get the next one. There is. I personally, I'm a big like pipe hitter. Anybody who Ooh. bangs their shaft on the pipes, that's me. I definitely annoy some defenders with that sometimes, but that's kind of what I do to just reset. Like I think about it as like turning the video game off, turning it back on. You mm -hmm. get 60 minutes, well, not including halftime, to prove to yourself and your team that you know what you're doing. And if you have to pause the game for a few seconds, reset yourself, hit those pipes, shake your helmet. That's just what I do to reset. Everything starts over. I like that. Sort of the physical reset, right? And just dink, 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 dink. Um, just like read myself that that was going to be my reset. I mean, I've seen goalies who hit their helmets. Yeah. Some people take their mouth guards out. I just like determined that a while ago that that was going to be my reset and like clicker trained myself that that's my <laughs> reset. <laughs> there you go. Um, very cool. What about, um, being a leader of the team? Would you call yourself a leader of the team? And, and, you know, what are your tips for the young girls who want to be the leader uh, of their own team? I have been a captain of my teams before. I was not this year, but my mm -hmm. freshman year I was, and I'd, I'd like to consider myself a leader. We'll see. My defense is probably laughing at that right now, but I think to be a leader doesn't have to mean you're captain or you're this or you're that, especially as a goalie, you have to know your defense. If you don't know your defenders, if I don't know that Corinne is always going to run a left clear, you have to know your players and be less. Don't be like a dictator, be the, be a leader who's understanding mm -hmm. and know your people. I feel like that's the biggest thing and be understanding again, mm -hmm. human over athlete. Yeah, I like it. I like it.
Um, awesome, Maddie. Well, thank you so much for, for coming on, uh, the show and kind of sharing your story. Um, wish you a bunch of luck in the, both in the thumb recovery and the, uh, I said, let's see, is it going to be next season that you start or are you still I'm at yeah. Emory at Emory? Yeah. I'm a senior at high school right now. So next year. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. You're senior at high school right now. So not, not this August or September, you don't go to college. You got one more year of high school and then, and then you're going to go. One more year. Sorry. I'm dual enrolled through our community college. So it's kind of confusing when I tell people I'm a senior in college, but I'm, going to be in real college next year. I got you. I got you. Um, awesome. Any other um, tips or stories that you feel like we missed or do you think we covered it? I think we covered everything. Just All be right. your own advocate is my advice to younger goalies. That's it. Okay. I always ask, I always ask, uh, I always leave it with um, your number one tip for the young goalies out there. And I think that's it, right? Be your own advocate. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Um, I forgot to ask about the gear. I, I want to ask a little bit about your gear. Do you know what stick to use? Are you into the gear at all? Or is it just like whatever, whatever they, whatever they give me? I'm specific. I'm okay. very specific. I have an STX Eclipse 2 head. Yeah. Those are my favorite. I have three of them. I have a white one, a black one. Well, not a white one anymore. I have a black one and a dyed one. I love an Eclipse 2. And my current stringer, who I trust for everything, is Mr. Wonderful. I don't know mm. probably know about him. I oh yeah, I got I, all of these sticks in the background here are done by Mr. Wonderful, with the exception of uh, how do I get there? That one right there, that yep. that one's done by someone else. But anyway, um, yeah, Only Mr. Wonderful is awesome. Yeah, STX is my go-to brand. Chest now, have you tried the Eclipse Three? I have not yet. Okay, I'm a loyal two. I can't loyal two. All right, put myself out there. All right, um, the Eclipse Three is nice. It's it's got a little bit more. Um, like stiffness. And then this part's sort of like angled down a little bit more. Um, so like the idea being, if it hits the top, like it kind of gets funneled yeah. in, uh, but it does throw a little bit differently because, because of that. So you got to make, got to make sure Mr. Wonderful hooks you up because he can make it where it like comes off just to, just as clean. Uh, but the Eclipse three is, it's nice. I mean, it's very, very similar to the Eclipse two with those exceptions. I just, I just mentioned. Yeah. I'll, I'll try it eventually. I'll get right. out my show, break out. Right. Um, what about the gloves? Gloves. My current gloves are STX goalie gloves, but I think I might be making a, a switch. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, there is no, uh, there is no perfect lacrosse goalie glove. I think you got to supplement with like a custom thumb splint or like the Evo shield, any, any sort of aftermarket thing. I, I'm definitely I do, um, in the market for one of those right now. I, do, I would say like, I would say the warrior goalie gloves, the, the warrior Nemi QS, I would say are my number one pick mm -hmm. right now for safety and comfort. I, I like those ones. Yeah. I'm definitely looking for some inserts after the past two seasons. So we'll see. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Shorts, I don't, I hate goalie shorts. If there's one gear that I get in trouble for not wearing, I never wear my goalie shorts and they're required in women's now. Yeah. Just can't get behind them. Check out, um, check out the thigh, these things called the thigh pros. They're like, they're compression shorts. Right. And mm -hmm. it's like really, it's pretty thin. So it feels like you're just wearing a pair of compression shorts. Yeah. Um, it's not max protect. Like you get hit there and like, it'll sort of, um, how can I put this? Like it won't leave as, intense as bad of a bruise as yeah. bad of a bruise but you'll still feel it but it but again it's the mobility is like it's like you're not even wearing them so i like those ones yeah. um and if someone's listening to this they sponsor my newsletter so if you use lgr coupon code they they hook you up i'll be looking at those all and right my last gear favorite is i love turfs turfs over cleats every single day i have the nike across turfs right now and yeah. i love them the low not high rise, like the mid rise ones. Uh huh. Them. Even on grass. Even on grass. Yeah. I know. I know it's bad. My coach is probably gonna cringe at that, but turfs over cleats any day. Yeah, oh. it makes sense because a lot of times, like, I mean, the fields can vary, but a lot of times the field, the goalie crease is like so worn out where the, where the goalie stands, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So even if the grass is like long, like where we're making saves, it's pretty worn out and dirt a lot of times. 
again, not every, not every field, but in my experience. So yeah, it makes, makes sense. They're easier to run in too, especially yeah. like sprinting and stuff. That's part yeah. of like the goalie training. And I just feel like they're like tennis shoes. Okay. All of my turfs. Uh, what about the chest pad? Oh, STX. I had a chest plate that I had used from the very early days. I'm thinking like fifth grade. And it unfortunately got left at a tournament. Mm. So I just got a new, the new STX one. It's white instead of black. Yeah. I yeah, think yeah. the version of it. It's called and the Shield 600. I think I like the black version better, but I'm adjusting. Okay. Awesome. I can't remember the names, but yeah. No, no, all good. All good. Um, all right, Maddie. Um, well, like I said, wish you a bunch of luck. Thank you for coming on the podcast. And uh, we'll be watching you, not this year, but next year uh, at Emory on Flow Live TV. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Have a great day. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye.